Hello everyone, welcome to Icarus Proud Bottoms World of Typing Weekly Episode 2. Want to apologize in advance for my voice being a bit messed up, I have a cold, so it's it's a bit strange sounding, but I'll power through. Let's go, new game. Welcome back. Before we continue the tale, let's recap what happened last time. <laughs> okay, so last time on Icarus Proud... Oh god. World of Typing... I always mess up at the beginning. Always. Without fail. After a surprise. I should just... I should just hand in my typing card. Uh, now I'm just depressed. Mm. Icarus was found murdered in the storage room. Why was that so hard? I have no idea. Flawless officer. That was not flawless game. That was not even close to flawless. So, uh, hello. This is kind of an awkward time here at the typing studio. Icarus Proudbottom, my cousin and the star of this game is dead. We're all pretty upset, but we're contractually, contractually obliged to keep teaching typing. Although I don't see why I should be the one to do the teaching. I don't know anything about typing. Also, I'm the only person here who doesn't uh, care deeply about typing. And let's not forget, Icarus is my freaking cousin. I'm still pretty traumatized over here. Ah, <sighs> how many times must we go over this? Thou most resemble Icarus, as thou shareth his genetics. The player is used to seeing Icarus, so the transition is easier if you teach. Plus. The mood is being lightened with this extremely happy music. Hey, in case you guys forgot, I actually know a lot about typing. No offense intended, but I'm definitely the most knowledgeable typist here. Uh, no offense intended, but thou art my number one suspect. You think I'd let the player interact with a murderous fiend? Ha! Whoa there! How are you qualified to make that call? I actually really like your little cop costume, but you're not a real detective. That's why I call the police. They should be here soon to figure this thing out. You call the police? Uh, yeah, of course. Why didn't you call them? <laughs> and now you're the one who looks suspicious. I was planning on investigating the murder myself. As Icarus's official spirit animal, vengeance for his murder should be my task. Also, we have a phone in this place. Let's all try to relax until the police arrive. Let's clear our heads with some of this typing stuff. Uh, let's see. What do I know about typing? There we go. Type this out or whatever. <laughs> Type this out or whatever. Thank you. Uh, typing is a thing that's done by pushing keys on your IPM. What? <laughs> Which makes letters pop up on the view screen. Who the hell calls it a view screen? There's one key for each letter. Yes. Plus a bunch of other ones. In total, there are probably like a hundred keys. Try to push them very quickly. And, and, don't make mistakes. Fancy cop. I'll take that rank. Wow. No offense, but this is exactly why I should take over the teaching. Hey. Everything I taught was technically true. Finally, that must be the Popo. Slaying for police. <laughs> oh, 
Wow, nice place you guys have here. Whether or not you choose to take that remark sarcastically is up to you. Anyways, I'm Special Agent Mark 22. I'm a Class A Justice Bot, sent by the BTI, Bureau of Typing Investigations. I hear you folks have a little murder on your hands. Names, please. Uh, I'm, uh, Apollo. Holy crap, a freaking robot. I'm Jerry. This is most curious. Lucida. Like the font. Get it? Anyways, uh, why a robot? Why a robot? Well, probably because robots are cool as shit. Each of my eye cams captures insane amounts of visual data at all times. My memory units have over a hundred petabytes of storage each. My CPU, clue processing unit, can process 10,000 CPS, clues per second. <laughs> I'm a crime-solving machine. Literally. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but there's no crime I can't solve. And when I say toot my horn, I mean that in a figurative sense, since I do... Since I come equipped with a little horn. Anyways, enough bullshot. Let's see this dead body. I've already moved the body into the basement morgue. Whoa, move the body. Insanely unprofessional. I'm having trouble computing the logic behind this one. How am I supposed to investigate a crime scene without a body? Perhaps now we see why the BTI sends out robots and not owls. Calm thyself, Jerry. Calm thyself. Anyways, in the absence of a body, we can examine the crime scene. Everyone, please wait out here. Except for the player, of course. Wow, oh, what a dump. I see these guys' clean cleanliness is approximately on par with their crime scene etiquette. In other words, a bunch of slobberoonies. Anyway, player, what should we examine first? Okay, let's start by checking out the letter A. Ah yes, how fitting. Starting with A, the first letter. I like your methods. Let's take a peek. Hmm. Looks a little scuzzy. Got some green jizz there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to read that. I, I read it and then I processed it like half a second later. Large chip missing from the left side. Possible murder weapon. What's next? Yeah, might as well check out the letter T. Ah, yes. T. Personally, I'm more of a coffee guy. <laughs> Anyways, no signs of blood, though, or signs of impact. Just a big T. What's next? Let's look at the letter Q. Ah, the letter Q. The weird uncle of the alphabet family. Looks normal to me. I don't see anything unusual here. Except for the fact that these guys own a big letter Q. What's next? I think I see something weird on the clock. Aha! A real clue of sorts. Of course, I saw that the instant I walked in. I just wanted to see how long it would take you to notice it. Hmm. There is no time. Cryptic. Fun. I'll need to figure out who wrote this, and when. What's next? Let's take a look at one of the soda cans. Dr. Typer. <laughs> ah, just your everyday can of Dr. Typer. America's favorite drink. Snooze fest. Nothing to see here. Let's move on. Uh, 
Oh, yes. Let's look at one of the keyboards. Hanging on the wall. Well, this is certainly a thing. Missing keys, bloodstains. I'm no typing expert, but I'm pretty sure that's not normal. Possible murder weapon. A typing instructor, beaten to death with a keyboard. Wow, how poetic. Yes, but let's take a look at... Let's take a peek at the back of the keyboard. Ah, yes, good. You're a sharp one. Trust not the pygmy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Another cryptic hint. Even more cryptic than the last. Trust not the pygmy. Interesting. Makes you think. Who or what is the pygmy? Do we have any pygmies here? This is going to take some mulling over. Never really understood why these kinds of hints are always so cryptic. Well, I think that's enough for now. We found some good stuff. Good starting point. And there's still so much to be done. Oy vey. Ah, thou hast returned. Did you find anything, man? As much as I'd like to share my findings, at this point, you're all still suspects. So I can't tell none of you jack squat about nothing. That sentence was a triple negative, meaning I can't tell you anything. Psst, detective. Yes, Lucida. Let me tag along with you. These guys kind of skeeve me out. Perhaps, once innocence has been established, friendship can follow. But right now, I need to write down my thoughts. Is there a room with a good sturdy table? We have an office in the next room. Feel free to set up camp there, I guess. I'll check it out now. Once again, I'll have to ask you all to wait out here. Sorry. Hmm. It's a bit of a stretch to call this a good sturdy table, but it will do. Ah, a little mug of hot, thick coffee. Why I was programmed to love coffee, who knows? But I'm not complaining. Now, before I forget... Alright, let's type in these clues here. Don't trust the pygmy. Pygmy is not a word I type very often. <laughs> also, oh my god, I can't stop messing up. There is no time. What do these clues mean? I must keep them in mind as I continue my investigation. Ah, nothing like the feeling of police work well done. I guess it's time for me to head back out there and interact with the weirdos. So, uh, what happens next? Why, we continue to pursue the truth. This probably strikes you as an, uh, unusual case, right? Actually, no. Not really. Typing, owls, robots, and murder is a more common combination than you'd think. Anyways, time to shift the investigation into high gear. So, which of you scrub lords wants to be questioned first? Actually, don't answer that. I gotta do this in the right order. And I already know who I want to talk to first. Jerry. If that is thy wish, fine. No probs. For have not to hide. My wings are clean. I'll be the judge of that, my feathered friend. Now, please wait out here for just a minute while I set up the interrogation room. Okay, player, it's just you and me. I lied to Jerry back there. I don't need to set anything up. Lol. I just wanted to clue you in on how this is going to go down. I'm thinking we'll do a classic cool cop, jerk cop routine. I'll be the jerk cop, and you'll be the cool cop. So if I seem to be acting like a jerk, relax. I'm just in character. 
Okay, let's signal Jerry in now. Come in, Jerry. Okay, here I am. Get thy show on the road. The player and I are going to ask you some questions. Please answer as directly as possible. No games. Player, would you like to start? Okay. Let's start with the basics. Why don't you tell us about your relationship with Icarus Proudbottom? I'm an American Indian spirit animal. It is in my nature to bond with a human host. Ever since Icarus and I bonded, I've been his faithful guardian. Protector, spirit guide, assistant, and all things. Or, sorry, protector, spiritual guide, assistant, and all things. Spirit animal, guardian. It makes me wonder. Do you ever feel jealous of Icarus's starring role? Hmm? Yes. Are you his guardian or sidekick? Have you ever wished the name of the game was Jerry Teaches Typing? Have you ever felt yourself fill with a jealousy that can only be described as murderous? Ah, nice try. Not. I'm a spirit animal. Jealousy goes completely against my nature. I'm not even sure if owls are physically capable of feeling jealousy. Fair enough. Let's go back to the beginning. Why don't you tell us how you met Icarus? How did you come to be a spirit animal? I first met Icarus in the sky. He was flying with amazing speed and prowess. At the time, I was hostless. And so I bonded with him then, and we shared many adventures. To see how Icarus and I first met, I recommend playing the first Icarus Proudbottom game. Icarus Proudbottom and the Curse of the Chocolate Fountain. An interesting story. So that was the past. But, here we are, in the present. Why don't you tell us everything you remember about Icarus's death? Where were you? What did you see? What did you hear? I was in the main typing room with Apollo and Lucida. Icarus was in the side room, alone. Well, seemingly alone. He had just talked with Lu Lucida in there, discussing I know not what. All of a sudden, click. The lights went out. Total darkness enveloped all. We heard footsteps, a door slam, then some loud thwacks. In just a few seconds, the lights came back on. We rushed into the room to check on Icarus. But he was already dead. Murdered. I believe I said, oh ye gods. That's one of my classic catchphrases. Hmm, something's fishy here. Can you once again describe how the building looked when Icarus was murdered? The lights had gone off and it was dark. Mighty interesting. Jerry, look at the size of your peepers. Owls have unbelievable night vision. I find it very hard to believe you couldn't see a thing. Now, let's do this one more time, and no more lies. What did you see when the lights went out? It is truth. Owls do have great night vision. But our eyes are not magical, nor are they flashlights. In total darkness, we can see not. And that was what it was. Total darkness. I didn't see a thing. How well 
Do you know Apollo? And Lucida? Tell me everything you know about them. And their relationship to Icarus. I'll start with Apollo. Truthfully, Icarus and I never much discussed our families. I was surprised to see a cousin of Icarus arrive in this place. And Icarus seemed surprised as well. I know nothing about him, but Apollo seems like a nice human. It is a shame he has had to, had to bear witness to these tragic events. I know not about what that about the woman named Lucida. Her arrival seemed to cause Icarus great shock. Their history is unknown to me, but it seems turbulent. Oh my god, if you say not one more time. Anyways, it seems strange that a spirit animal would know so little about his host's relationships. The bond of the spirit animal goes far beyond chit-chat. My role is not that of a conversational partner. Rather, my goal is to help Icarus achieve self-actualization. The fulfillment of his dreams and wishes. But I have failed, for he is dead. And, once again, I am hostless. Thank you for your time, Jerry. That will do for now. You're free to leave. Damn. That got intense fast. I would have liked to hammer that dude with some more hard-hitting questions. But, you know, you gotta pace these things. Can't have breakfast without scrambled eggs. But you have to make sure that you don't, uh, get shells in the... I forgot where I was going with this analogy. Anyways, time to continue. <coughs> Excuse me. Hey man, how much longer is this going to take? I'm bored. There's nothing to do in this place except talk about typing. Well, let's do something about that boredom. How does some nice, hot interrogation sound? It's legitimately better than standing around in a typing room. I feel like I need to talk to someone about all this stuff anyways. No, you're gonna leave me alone with a supernatural owl? Well, if I come back and either one of you is dead, I'll know the other one was the killer. Therefore, I predict that neither of you will kill the other while I'm gone. Anyways, Apollo, shall we? Oh my god, what is that? <laughs> uh, Mark? Mark 22, can you hear me? I can't keep this channel open for long. Did you find them? Find them? What? What is this? <sighs> you big doof. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Great. Here we go again. Uh-oh. Losing signal already. Just get them back, and quick. What the heck was that? What the heck was that? None of you saw that? None of us saw what? I'm seriously the only one who saw that. You're seriously the only one who saw what? Ah, oh, forget it, jeez. Must have been a weird glitch. Anyways, Apollo, let's do this. Follow me, please. Hey, look at that. This is like a real professional operation. You even got one of those lamps. Yeah, I gotta say, not a bad setup. Anyways, please take a seat. Let's get this started. Can you start by describing your relationship with Icarus Proudbottom? Yeah, man. He was my cousin, as you already know. We actually had a real good relationship. Got along really well when we were kids. When you were kids, 
Are you saying that your relationship as adults was not good? No, I didn't say that at all. Jeez. What a jerk cop. <laughs> I guess he's living up to his name. Or his role, rather. Okay, before you arrived at this place, when was the last time you saw Icarus? I hadn't seen him for a few years. But it's not like we had some sort of falling out, no. Our lives just went in different directions, you know? He got really into typing, while I had my own non-typing related life and career. The Proudbottom family is a happy family. There's one thing I find very odd. Very odd indeed. Why did you come to this place? It seems suspicious that you would arrive, damn it. On the same day your cousin was killed. Yes. I agree. It's very strange. What timing? What are the freaking chances? I don't know what I can tell you. I just came because I wanted to visit Icarus. Maybe someone killed Icarus when I arrived on purpose. To make me seem guilty. What the H was that? I'm not totally sure, but I can take a guess. I'd say it's the guilty party making another move. Let's check it out. Jerry? Lucida? Tell me exactly what you just saw. Lucida and I were standing about, talking of Icarus, when suddenly the lights went out. Yep, we were just standing here. Lights went out, went back on. I couldn't see anything. And I take it, once again Jerry saw nothing. Despite his huge owl eyes, Jerry, where in this place are the lights controlled? That would be upstairs, in the tech center. And answer me this. Does anyone work in the tech center? Well, yeah, our IT guy, Kelso, works up there. So, this entire time, while I've been trying to solve this crime, there's been another person in this building that I haven't known about. Well, yeah, Kelso. The IT guy. Jerry, jeez. Everyone stay here. I'll go check it out. Eh, don't worry. About the tech center. There's really n There's really totally, totally nothing to see there. Just some boring computers. And me. Kelso, the inconsequential IT guy. I take it that the tech center is where his typing stuff is controlled. Yes, that's where the letters get inputted and stuff. Imbued with magics, I may be, but the building, alas, no. Okay, I'm freaking going up there. Be careful. Kelso, I know you're up here. Come out, slowly. I warned you. You shouldn't have come up here. I didn't want to do this. But you've left me no choice. On guard! I don't want to fight you, Kelso. Come peacefully. It's too late. I already said on guard. <sighs> okay then. I prefer the cerebral method of crime fighting. Using my intellect to create answers where, once, there were only questions. However, 
I'm also programmed to kick some serious ass if required. Let's throw down. What the hell? <laughs> Punching with words. Whammo! Oh, cool! Blammo! <laughs> Slam, bam, punch. Wumpin', whackin'. Oh, God. These are words I do not normally type. Am I getting him? I, I think I'm getting him. I think I'm getting him. I can't. I can't look down. I'm too focused. I see punches happening. There we go. Did I get him? Top officer. Now that I've totally owned you, are you ready to come peacefully? Not quite. I have another trick up my sleeve. Huh. I'd like to see that. Firstly, my body is crafted of pure neutronium, rendering my, me near invincible. Secondly, your shirt appears to be sleeveless. Take this! Hey, what did you do? I just hit you with a mini EMP. I thought it would knock you out. Apparently it didn't. But still, your brain should be half scrambled. Yes, my mind feels all fuzzy and numb. As if I just finished watching a Michael Bay movie. Plus, wow, what an annoying sound effect. On guard. What the f... Uh, hard to fight because my brain is all jacked up. Oh dear god. How the... what the... Th th this is horrible. I don't know if I can do this. This is so awkward, oh my god. I guess I'm doing okay. Yeah, I think I got this. is that? There we go. <laughs> it was an L. Okay, got this, got this. Yeah, yep, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Gosh darn. Nice try, Slugman. Even with a goofed up brain, I still won. Two out of three, Lamo. It's over. Come on, let's head downstairs. If I can't finish off your body, I'll kill your brain. That doesn't look good. You unplugged my USB drive without ejecting it first. As everyone knows, that instantly breaks a computer. Internal damage detected. Initiating emergency shutdown. <sighs> Whew. That was close. But he's dead now. And thank God, he came close. Close to learning. The truth. And so, Mark 22 is assaulted. Possibly dead. Rendered a lifeless husk of useless broken software. Much like Windows 8. Why? What does it all mean? Who is Kelso? What is his role in this mystery most fiendish? Fret not, viewer. The answer continues. 
Oh, the answers continue next week. Dun dun dun. So the IT guy is a slug man. Never saw that coming. No, truthfully, I never saw that coming. I didn't even I didn't even know there was an IT guy. It's like, hey yeah, there's an IT guy upstairs. He's been there uh the entire time. Also he's a slug. And he's wearing the same shirt as Icarus Proudbottom, which is strange. Hmm. Alright. Once again, apologies for my voice. I know it was not too good sounding. Very stuffy. It's pissing me off. I kinda wanna strangle it, but I suppose if I strangle my own voice, I, my voice probably won't get any better, will it? <laughs> anyway. Hope you enjoyed watching me play through Icarus Proudbottom's World of Typing Weekly Episode 2, and I will be back soon for the third episode. Thank you for watching.